Oh my god, that looks so good. <laughs> <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Encore Sunshine Key RV Resort, which we love. It's a great location. It's a quick drive to Key West. Actually, not that quick, but it's pretty close. It's like an hour max. And we're going into Key West today because it is the Florida Keys Seafood Festival. I think it's the 18th annual, and we're excited to get into Key West and have that on our list of things to do today. So every time we leave the dogs for the day, we always do our double checks, which is our air conditioners set to the right temperature. We have a pet monitor up there against the wall. And then right next to that is also a temperature sensor. So all that is remote Wi-Fi. And so anywhere we have a cell signal away from our RV, we can come back, check the camera, we can get alerts for the temperature and just make sure everything's going well. There's also a really great dog park here that we'd love to bring these guys to every morning, get their exercise, and also get their socialization out before we leave them for the day. So we always like to give the skinny on the parking situation everywhere we go. And in Key West, we know that there is some free parking over by Louie's backyard because we parked there uh, last time we were in Key West and it's basically just residential street parking. And then I also read that there's some free parking on Olivia and Fort Street down by the actual fort uh, in Key West there. So that's a parking lot. We'll see how full it is. It's, we're not getting there super early, so we might be in a little bit of trouble. The thing with having a big truck is you have to allow yourself time, not only to drive around and find the parking, but then also you usually have to park a little bit further away and walk a little bit further to where you're actually trying to go. Yes. All right, so that was a pretty sweet find here for parking. It's Saturday morning at 10.30, so you can see how uh, little use this parking lot actually gets. Yeah, we found that in a lot of cities, um, especially like touristy places too, people take a while to wake up. So usually around like noon, the streets get really busy, people sleep in, you know, cause they're up late having fun and whatever. And as long as you get here early, that really increases your odds. Plus, the fact that you knew this was here and that we plugged this in, came straight here, that helped tremendously. Yeah, I think it's a free spot. And for you dually owners out there with the big boys. like With you I, big booty duallys. I think that it would actually fit here as well for all you RVers out there. Okay, first stop, I think we're gonna get the bikes and head down to the southernmost point since we're really close to that. And we'll check out the, the famous buoy. Yeah, and we're also really super close to Duval Street too. On an e-bike, you're close to everything. I love the e-bikes, I'm ready to go. Yeah, the line's moving pretty quick today, but sometimes this line goes way back and you could be standing here for an hour just to get that little selfie. You wanna do it, Aaron? I don't think we'll ever do it. So our time-saving hack is to get to the picturesque destination and then get on the outside of it 
and you can sneak peeks and you can even wait for like a changing of the guards when people are swapping spots and you can get a picture of this iconic buoy while there's nobody there. The line actually isn't too long right now because it is a little bit early, but we kind of like to hang back and just get a sneak peek from the side and move on. And I've got to say that so far having these bikes is already a really great way to see Key West. It's our third time here. We've never done it on bikes, so we're excited because we're gonna be able to cover so much more ground. And it's actually a really great way to stay cool too because it's so hot here and so humid and the breeze on the bikes just feels really, really good. Yeah, look at the waves today. Ooh. Yeah, the water's up high. But yeah, it literally took two minutes to bike here. People are having fun. Back on the bikes we go, continuing exploring Key West. It might seem pretty big if you're on foot, but there's a lot of rental places to help out with that. We saw tons of golf carts, scooters, and bike rentals. Down on this end of the island are some popular things that we just haven't done in our three trips to Key West. There's the Ernest Hemingway Home and Museum, Fort Zachary Taylor State Park, with a beautiful beach I hear, and the Key West Butterfly and Nature Preservatory. Let us know if anyone recommends doing these next time we come. We are at Eaton Street. It's actually on Eaton Street. And Eaton Street Seafood Market is actually our favorite spot to eat. The past few years we've eaten here every single time, but we're not gonna eat here today because we are going to the seafood festival and we're gonna save our tummy space for that. But we highly recommend this place it's off the main tourist drag and it really i feel like it's a secret of the locals where the locals come to get their fresh seafood it's really cool on the inside because you can order things off the menu that's cooked like a normal restaurant but they also have raw seafood that you can either purchase to take home with you or you can have them cook it right on site for the freshest feeling meal possible they also have things like beer and wine. You can sit outside, bring your dog, and just enjoy the nice weather here. It's super chill, and the employees are always very friendly. As you continue down Duval Street towards Mallory Square, you can really tell it starts to get a lot busier with tourists. Most days, there'll even be cruise ships that dock and let off hundreds of people to explore Key West. We planned on showing you more of Mallory Square, but we ran into the Sunset Pier, which is such a unique and tranquil property right on the water's edge. The colorful atmosphere, island vibe, and beautiful blue water was calling our names to take a little break from the heat. So we cruised up and down Duval Street, and it was very touristy, lots of people, lots of places to eat and drink and shop and loud music and we're like oh it's loud music there and we really wanted somewhere kind of quiet to escape to and we found the perfect spot we are at sunset pier and it's absolutely beautiful here on the water the water is strikingly blue there's boats cruising by us right now we got a classic my brain is kind of fried from the sun we got a classic mojito and it is good and it feels great to just sit in the shade and relax and just enjoy a little bit of this beautiful water before we get back on the land. And we needed a giant water. Yes. It is very humid today. When you stand in the sun, you just drip sweat. So that's another reason why it's good to have those bikes, man. I can't stop talking enough about how great they are, especially when it's hot like this. So being in the shade helps, drinking water helps, being on the bike helps to stay cool and just kind of escape that sun for a minute. We're gonna finish this drink and then we are going to head up to our main event, which is the Seafood Festival. I feel like the Florida Keys are high on the bucket list of destinations for anyone in their RV. It's probably the only place in the United States you can drive your RV to and feel like you're in a tropical vacation destination in another country. You just can't beat cruising around the streets of Key West in January feeling like a local. 
We just got here super quick on bike and we need to pay the $10 entrance fee, which is actually good for today and tomorrow if we wanted to come back. It's a fundraiser, goes towards good causes and we want to get some of that delicious seafood. So let's go inside and check it out. It's always such a nice bonus surprise when you see there's a festival going on the same day you're visiting a place. Some turn out to be a bust, but this one was actually pretty good. We were really coming just for the food, and to our surprise, it was a lot bigger than we expected. It had a good amount of local vendors and artists selling goods, and they even had live music that switched out every couple hours. Chris and I were both immediately drawn to one spot though, the Megalodon Shark Tooth Sale. We were blown away by this local Keys couple that dives for prehistoric shark tooth fossils. Some of the teeth were the size of your hand and weighed a good three or four pounds. Chris and I have been looking out for something like this for years as it was a great gift for Chris's dad. We had fun picking out the perfect one for him. There was of course a good variety of fresh seafood on hand and both of us were looking forward to lunch. So since we are at a seafood festival, we decided to go with only seafood. We skipped the sides. It helps us taste more seafood and save more money. So this, we got lobster for 20 bucks. We got stone crabs for 20 bucks and fish for $14. So everything you see here was $54 total, which if you consider going to like a nice sit down restaurant, it would be way more than that. Hopefully it tastes as good as the value is and we walk away truly happy, but I am hungry, so let's dig in and see how it tastes. All right. I actually really, really like tartar sauce. I'm gonna dig in some tartar sauce. I was attracted to the fish. I really like that. You generally are a breaded fish person. Yeah, that's probably the best deal of the house, fish. I don't know what kind it is. I didn't even ask. Ooh. Looks tender. The thing about crab is it's always so messy. Oh my god, that looks so good. Ay ay ay. Ay 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 is right. Oh yeah, you ready? Okay, the lobster might be my new favorite. But in closure, I would say my biggest surprise is that I like lobster more than I thought. That was my favorite seafood from our seafood platter and they just don't serve it like that in Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> You ready? 